So it's a great pleasure to be here and to share with you and discuss with you our recent project, as uh, Franco told you already. So my name is Xuan Ning, working for quite many years with uh, Marcus Reck. My position is a research associate. So this project is in cooperation with the Peter Uchenko in the States. Uh, the project is mainly run by the postdoc in our lab, Judith Reinhardt. So she did the most important experiment that this project gets through. So I think at the beginning, I'd rather introduce the people here and also acknowledge the people who contributed to this study. So in this case, we, we are studying the namely alpha-2 deficient muscular dystrophy, so-called the lama-related muscular dystrophy. This is the new name before as the term as a melosin deficient muscular dystrophy called the MDC1A. Uh, so this disease that is a very severe disease and start from the beginning of the birth. And this uh, therefore is a congenital muscular dystrophy, a very relative high frequent, uh, especially in Europe. And this muscle weakness happens already at birth. So sometimes you can we call the flappy child. The, the patient is a completely, uh, does not have the muscle strength. Therefore, it's a, called a flappy child. The motor neuron development is the delayed because the, this numbing is also required for the uh, central nerve system. And this patient is uh, so severe disease, so usually die as a teenage. And currently there's no therapy available for this kind of disease. The problem in this case is because the namely 211, so this namely is the composed of three trains, the alpha, alpha two train, and this the C terminal of our two train has the intergreen binding and the digital glycan binding. Therefore, it's linked to the, the muscle membrane. At the basal lamina, this is the extracellular matrix, namely, and it's formed the network rely on the, this, the so-called LN domain, I will introduce you later, and also the rely on the B tra beta train and the gamma train. The name of the determination of the uh, lamining, so there are several alpha trains and the several beta train and gamma train. In the skeletal muscle majority in the adult stage is the alpha 2, beta 1, gamma 1. Therefore, it's called the lamining 2, 1, 1. We start from the patient analysis. So you, you see that, that this lamining namely, uh, lama 2 patient, you see this if we made the muscle cross section and stained for lamining alpha 2, then you see it is present that in the basal lamina there, there in the control that is missing in the patient. Otherwise, this beta 1, gamma 1 is present there also in the patient. The missing of the lamining alpha 2 caused the so-called upper regulation or the alpha 4. But this can be discussed later. Actually, it's not because the 
upon recognition because namely alpha 4 is the embryonic isoform of namely. Uh, in the adult stage, this namely alpha 4 becomes disappeared and is present only in the blood vessels or the, at the neural mass junction. And in the patient, then you see this expression still remain there at the base of lamina. And this namely alpha 4 is an important protein, of course, in, in our study. And later on, we can keep namely alpha 4 working. And this can be also see you, you see that in the patient, by Western blotting in patient, this alpha 2 is missing, then alpha 4 is upregulated. And this can be uh, quantified here and concerning the, concerning the beta 1, gamma 1 is not always changed. So the, in the animal model, we apply the is so-called uh, uh, DYW mice. There are couples of the animal models available for this kind of diseases. And we, we are using the, the model called the DYW. DYW, we believe this is a suitable animal model because the disease development in the animal is kind of similar to be in the patient. So they, the animal has uh, also uh, early dis disease onset and also died between 4 to 20 weeks. They have also, of course, the muscle weakness. And you see this, namely alpha 2 is missing in the skeletal muscle. And there's also the articulation of the alpha 4 isoforms. This can be quantified and similar to the patient that uh, beta, beta 1, gamma 1 is not a change. So you, you can see here there's just a schematic drawing here that compared to the 2 on 1, the 4 on 1 is the namely alpha, alpha 4 composed of the uh, namely. It's different from two on one. Always this head is, is gone. It's not present. Later on, I will tell you also some other problems. So what, when the head is gone, what could be the problem? Then you can see that uh, now you did the right heart. <coughs> Developed method as introduced uh, by the uh, Peter Yuchenko's lab and uh, introduced uh, into our lab to assess the stability of the basal lamina or the basement membrane is to do the subcellular fragmentation, uh, fra fractionation. And to do this, basically, you Get, get the, take a muscle to homogenize the into in the TBS and then spin it down, then you got the S1 soluble protein. Then you add the MP40, then you spin down, get the second uh, solution. And then important here is then you cut off the this to the collagen with uh, collagenase and get so-called uh, sample uh, basement membrane proteins. And then you add the EDTA and to get rid of calcium because calcium is important for the polymerization of the lamin. Laminins and therefore if you use EDTA then you can finally get a so-called stable base memory solution. So as you can see here, 
if we concentrate here on the S3 and the S3 and the S4, this uh, sample mem uh, base mem memory protein or the stable base mem memory protein, then you will see in the patient, in the patient uh, biopsy, then you see that in the control that this namely alpha 2 is largely present in the S4 fraction. And in the patient here, of course, the uh, alpha 2 is missing, <coughs> right? Alpha 2 is missing, then it's caused the upper regulation of alpha 4. Then alpha 4, instead of present largely in the S4, is largely present in S3. It means it forms the network which is not uh, stable. Therefore, you can see here the network working when in the patient when that 211 is missing, is formed the 411. 411 comes from the embryonic state expression. And 411 is the, has the problem because in the 211, it has the head which can form the lamin network called the polymerization. On the other hand, it has the, this uh, lamin G domain which link to the cell membrane with the intergreen and the digital glycan. And for this, 401 cannot do the job. It does not bind to intergreen, it does not bind to digital glycan either. Therefore, expression of 411 does not help muscle to correct the disease development. And therefore, muscle is still not happy. So, many years ago in our lab, we, uh, we were working with the, another extracellular protein called agrin. So the agrin, if you look at this structure here, it's a big protein, extracellular protein. And in the middle part, there's a lot of uh, glycosination making this protein pretty big. And important is that agrin contains the lamin binding site. This binds to the lamin gamma-1 train. And it also has the alpha digital glycan binding site, combines to alpha digital glycan. Therefore, we designed the molecule which we have uh, shortened uh, this molecule, uh, the fusion protein called the uh, mini agrin. Therefore, it's the MAC here. And this MAC now can make a link between the Dichroglycan and lamin 401. Because here, the lamin gamma 1 binding and alpha dichroglycan binding. And with this, can rescue partially the disease progression. This is only show you the in vitro assay. That you can see, if we compare to the lamin 411, which binds to integrin, this is the integrin binding assay, combines to integrin, and this namely 401 does not, cannot bind to integrin. If we bind into alpha digital glycan, namely 401, unlike namely 111, also does not bind to digital glycan. Binding to digital glycan, if we add into the solution the MAC, mini agrin, then the binding is largely improved here. Therefore, we made a transgenic animal model can rescue the disease. And now in this case, in this study, now what we want to do is we want to add another molecule 
to make the head of the Lemmy 401. The contrast to do this, we apply that this uh, from the from the lemming, you see the lemming has the n domain, lemming n domain here is important for the polymerization. You see here uh, this is the schematic structure, this alpha, beta, gamma, they conform the make the link. And you may also know that uh, as I told you this polymerization is calcium dependent. And then with this, and also use the uh, nitrogen is another extracellular matrix protein. This uh, nitrogen combines to combines to a uh, lemon gamma one here on this side. Therefore, you can see that 411, which cannot form the polymerization, if we add this fusion protein, design the two proteins, fusion protein that improve largely the polymerization here. So based on the, this work, this work, uh, in which work uh, was largely done in the Peter E. Jenkins lab, and therefore we use the uh, animal model. So before we do this, we need also to confirm that this in which study also did job. So this, for to do this, we use the C2, C12 molecules, culture the C2, C12 muscle fibers. In the culture, the muscle fibers does not have the agrin. Uh, so, sorry, does not have the lamin. <coughs> Therefore, on the top of the, this culture, if we use the lamin two on one, then we, if we use the antibody against the uh, lamin gamma one, we can see that this namely two on one bind to the muscle fibers. And then we see the immunofluorescence intensity increases. And if we use the uh, namely four on one, if I add the namely uh, alpha and then D, or add the uh, mini agarin increase a bit, and if we use uh, these two molecules together, the binding increase a lot. This can be quantified here, as you can see this. Which uh, compared to two on one, and these uh, two contrasts help the four on one to bind to the uh, muscle fibers. Is, is it more or less clear so far? Do you have any questions so far? Please interrupt me if I did not explain that very well. It's OK? OK. So I go, go on here. I already spent uh, 20 minutes. So. Uh, to do this, of course, we made the animal model. So the animal model, we have the DYW animal model, which with the uh, upper nucleation of LEMI 411, which does not have the head for the polymerization, which does not bind to integrin, does not bind to alpha digitalgycan. And we have the single transgenic, the mini agarin with the link between the 411 to dysroglycan. And we have the single transgenic alpha and D, then add the head to the 411, which will help the polymerization. And then we have the double transgenic. This is the animal model we want to test 
whether this can really rescue the mice. So first of all, we looked at expression of the changing in the animal model. So as expected, that alpha and D, which is about 170 or 180 kilotarton protein, is placed only in DYW, alpha and D, or in double transgenic. And the mini green MAC here, only placed in the DYW or the MAC or the double transgenic. The MAC here, I do not want to discuss too much in details. There are two bands. I can tell you this lower band is the degraded product. But overall, if we concentrate in the upper band, is already enough for the, for the uh, is for the expression to rescue the disease. If we use the immunofluorescence, we can see that alpha and D and gamma, uh, namely gamma 1 and the MAC, they co localize. Therefore, it's placed right at the basement membrane in scattered muscle in the tricep the muscle of the four week old mice. Okay. And now last of course could be the alpha four, where the alpha four is pressed or the the gamma one, beta one, you can see the alpha four is upper regulated in all the this the uh, Transgenic, different uh, transgenic animals in the background of the DYW. So the, in the DYW, because the missing of the lamin alpha 2, lamin alpha 4, the embryonic isoform retain in the skull muscle. This now, in our case, can be applied to which we can use the a mini agarine back to make a link or use the alpha and D to make additional head for the to help the polymerization or in double transgenic here. This of course just that quantification. And now important thing is whether this double transgenic will help to stabilize the base mem membrane in the muscle. To do this, you did right hard again, apply that this S1, S4. Do you remember? Or to try and repeat, come back to the skin? No, it's not necessary. I think we, we concentrate them mostly on the S3 and S4. So S3 is should represent the soluble uh, basement membrane proteins, or the S4 is the stable basement membrane protein. So you can see that DYW, DYW mice that uh, namely alpha 4 present largely in the S3, unstable, sensible fraction. And if we use the single transgenic MAC or alpha and D, this got improved. And if we express the two changing uh, together, then you can see this alpha 4 present largely in the S4. And this can be quantified here. Therefore, you see here in the double transgenic, really the proportion is largely present in the uh, in the stable, stable solution here, here. OK? If we look, of course, we control the, whether this will come up together with the beta 1, gamma 1. Yes, indeed, it is the case. The double transgenic here, 
here is already very similar to the wild type mice largely come to the S4 fraction. If we look the base mem membrane directly, we can look at it by the electron microscopy. This has been done by me. And you can see here, first of all, in the, from the wild type mice, this is the muscle fiber, this is the cell membrane of the muscle, muscle fiber, we call it the sarcolema. And then above the, this sarcolema, you see here a layer of the electron dense the material by electron microscopy. Here, it is the basement membrane. It's a basement membrane. And if we look this basement membrane, you can see here in the DYW, it's almost missing, getting lost. And if we use that single chain genetic, we bring back this basement, mem basement membrane a, a little. But if we use the double chain genetic, we bring it largely the basement membrane, which is similar to wild type. And this can also be quantified by using applying the uh, ImageJ program using the uh, line profile to make a line close, close here, the base mem membrane here, then we can see that the intensity of the base mem membrane and also the width of the base mem membrane can be quantified here. And you can see that in two wire type, two wire type here, they are up like this, and the double chain genetic is here, is very similar to the wire type already. And the DYW here, this, this line, you can see the intensity is almost go to the uh, background level. And two single chain genetic is in between uh, here, you can see. And also the width seems reduced as well. This will confirm strongly that uh, this the uh, double chain genetic indeed is really better than single chain genetic to improve the, the assembly of the basement membrane. Now, of course, we need to look at the phenotype. Then if we made a close session to make the uh, hematocinin, eosin staining, then you see this structure. The, you see this uh, muscular dystrophy. You can see that the radiation of the muscle fibers, some of them are very big, some of them are smaller, and they, are, they become uh, they become uh, also the roundish of the, this uh, the, the sign of the muscular dystrophy, and the space between the muscle fibers enlarge. They are at the later stage. They are all the, all these muscle fibers will be replaced by the the necrotic tissues or the fibrotic tissues, and called the fibrosis. I will show you later as well, and. Then if we look at the single chain genetic, it's getting improved. And in the double chain genetic, this structure is largely improved. It's very similar to the control mice. This has been done in the tricep muscle and in the eight week old mice. And if we look at the muscle fiber, we can see that, that Mean muscle fiber size is getting improved. There's already significant and uh, higher, bigger than the DYW. 
and not only the fiber fiber size, also the fiber number is start to be collected con to the control level. And to look the muscle fiber size more precisely, usually we use the fiber size distribution to count the many fibers to see the fiber size distribution. And you can see this dot line is the control, and uh, this line, light blue line, is the double transgenic. It's still not uh, exactly the same as the, the control mice, but it's the closest one to the control. Okay, and as I mentioned that, uh, before that, uh, when the muscle fiber died in the muscle dystrophy case, the, the fiber muscle is replaced uh, by the fibrotic tissue. It's called the fibrosis. And this can be seen especially by the serious silhouette staining. For example, if we close session, we can stain there with serious red, as you can see obviously here. And in DY bar view, is the, this fibrosis is very obvious. And you see here in the single transgenic or the double transgenic is getting improved, especially the double transgenic is very close to the control level here. And this fibrosis can be also quantified by the hydroxyproline uh, quantification because uh, hydroxyproline is present in the collagen. And if the muscle fiber tissue is replaced by the collagen, and then we can see that this collagen, uh, hydroxyproline in increase. As you can see, this is increased in the DYW and compared to the control and double transgenic is already the similar level to the control. And single transgenic, transgenic improved a bit, but not yet that much. And of course, we also need to, to look at the muscle function. If we look at the uh, muscle function by measuring the muscle force, then you can see that this indeed in the in the either the single transgenic or double transgenic in the eight week old, uh, we you, you measure the EDL muscle. This is significantly different, higher than the DYW mice. Then the difference between these three genotype, uh, genotypes is not obvious in the eight week old mice, but the, when we wait a bit more, like a 16 week old mice, then we can see that indeed that double transgenic mice are performed much better than the single transgenic mice. In this six week old, the DY barbell almost all died there, therefore we cannot measure it anymore. And also we can look at the grid trends by putting the uh, mouse on the grid and reverse the, the grid then see whether the mouse fall down, uh, when they fall down. And measuring performed in the three minutes, within three minutes, then the, this the uh, control mice, of course, no problem. And then you see um, DYW almost cannot hold for a second. And you see double transgenic indeed performed much better uh, than all the others. And finally, maybe the, if you look at the mice, the, this the DYW, the eight week old DYW mice is become very small and the double transgenic, the mice is not exactly the same size as the control here. This maybe give you the long impression they are, uh, it is the similar size, but the actually not, maybe because the angle of the camera here. But 
uh, if we looked up growth curve here, body weight, then this is the control double transgenic is much better than the single transgenic or much better than the DY bubble mice. And also look at survival. Of course, this could be the most important. And you see that the DYW mice dropped very quickly. Single transgenic, either the uh, mini agglin or alpha and D helped a lot. Double transgenic can leave almost like a control. And you see here this 120 weeks, almost older than two years now, the, some of the mice are still alive. And now this already bring me to the summary. I think I try to convince you that in the DYW mice, the retain the lemony 4 on 1 does not help the to for the disease progression. If we use the uh, transgenic animal model to always press the either the mini agrin or alpha and D have a lot. And if we express both, then this we have the very strong amelioration of the phenotype. We can see that by the muscle histology. We can see that by muscle force, body weight, um, more important, maybe the survival. And important also here for, for this study is the first time to indicate that the stability of the base mem membrane. Then this sends to the UD dry heart. Uh, she contributed the most here. And to indicate that only express that these two changing that's largely stabilized the base membrane proteins at the base membrane muscle. Now, of course, this if these molecules will become real for the uh, to the therapy of the disease, of course. We also think about the AV vector to correct it. So many years ago, just after we have the first publication of the mini agrin to, to ameliorate the disease, as application of the uh, mini agrin packed into the AV, then you, is, you can see that, uh, that, that this improved largely already the survival. Yeah, I think that this will be the last. It's the same as the, the first slide that I like to acknowledge you again, the people. And I will thank you for your attention. And I'm open now for your questions. Yeah.